This is Lesson 2, Electrical Demand and Careers in Wind. We'll talk about local wind energy usage, um, electrical demand, peak demand, commercial and industrial demand, residential demand, grid tied systems, standalone sources, uh, remote power sources, specialized training areas. Also required knowledge within the wind turbine industry, required knowledge of wind technicians, skills and safety knowledge of wind technicians, green jobs, and career pathways. Local wind energy usage and potential. Demand in the United States and the rest of the world has been on the rise for some time. Um, these demands really require a lot of cleaner energy sources. Um, since cleaner electrical power generation methods are needed, um, we also need wind turbines and other green alternatives. and we will look at the United States demand on the next few slides here. The daily United States demand for electricity fluctuates from weekday to weekend and during different seasons for obvious reasons. Um, different times of the year, different climate, different demand for it. The total daily demand changes by the hour this fluctuating demand means that the amount of electricity generated must change every hour, daily, weekly, to keep up with demand and not um, exceed demand where power would be wasted. They would be, um, like in some power plants like coal and nuclear plants, they use heat, so they have to adjust ahead of time for the changing demand. The electrical grid, as it's called, is the interconnection of power plants, substations, and power line systems that carry electricity around an area. Um, local wind and its potential um, has to do with our electrical demand here in the United States. Um, peak electrical demand is the greatest quantity of electrical energy required over a given period of time and it varies from state to state. Um, the peak demand may change from a high demand for some time to a much lesser demand during the end of the day. That's most common. Um, due to This is due to decreased power usage by industries, factories, businesses, and homes. Um, only third shift or businesses and industries, places like that, would still be using power. Um, also, when you think in, in winter, when it gets dark out earlier, there's also an increased need for street lamps and also like security lights, so that plays a big role in it. Other factors cause changes in the grid, um, weather, um, even the rain, it gets cloudy, a whole lot of uh, lamps and security lights will turn on, um, pumps for rain, stuff like that. If it's humid, um, air conditioning, and it fluctuates from time to time. Power utilities must continuously plan ahead, as mentioned earlier, for the changes in demand. Um, obviously it takes time for the coal-fired power plant or a nuclear power plant to add heat or remove heat from their boilers. Utility companies have installed backup or auxiliary systems that can be brought online and connected to the grid um, fairly quickly in case there's excess demand that the power plant can't reach. It has They have these small generators, well, small by comparison, but still fairly large generators that power the grid. These backup generators are usually powered by natural gas or oil and they are often called peaking systems. Commercial and industrial demand. 
commercial and industrial demand may use nearly 60 percent of electrical power available. Um, it's a very large number, but it's predictable. And the reason why it's predictable is that commercial and industrial demand, factories usually run, if they are building the same um, equipment or whatever it is they make, they will draw about the same amount from the grid and it's it can be planned ahead. When demand for electricity begins to exceed the supply, voltage on the entire system becomes lower. Um, the situation is called a brownout. Uh, don't know if any of you have seen this happen, but during a brownout the power doesn't go completely out. It just goes out slightly. Um, it just reduces the voltage and lights will glow sort of a tan faint color and that's where the name comes from. If a brownout has happened and it is expected to occur for a long period of time the utility company should turn off the peak uh, turn on peaking generators to aid that and if that can't be done that part of the grid th that's experiencing the brownout needs to be shut off entirely because it can ruin some electrical equipment if it's ran um, on lower voltage. Another option, when possible, would be to disconnect the smaller section of the grid that may be using all of that power. So the voltage is restored to the rest of the area, but that part, is, their power is shut off completely. Um, also, some industries, and this is, they work together with the power company, the industries will turn off their equipment during certain times of the day to allow the grid to um, plant it to allow for changes um, later on and it's also to prevent too many factories from running at peak power all at the same time so one industry down the way may need to use some high power equipment that requires electricity obviously and they will schedule the times that they will be will, will be doing that and they discuss it with the other companies and the power company helps um, put it all together organize it residential demand is probably what fluctuates the most um, consists of very large loads and several continuous loads. Um, the larger loads in homes which demand more power include air conditioners, heaters, heat pumps, well pumps, basically any large motor, also electric stoves, electric ranges, um, dryers, and ovens as well, microwave ovens. So air conditioning and electrical heating loads are seasonal parts, so that has to do with the yearly change in demand. Continuous loads include security lighting, some pumps, refrigerators, and freezers. Um, you combine all the, these factors together, it creates the residential demand, which does fluctuate dramatically. Um, even when people get up at different parts of the day, say they work at 8, they're coming in, they're brewing coffee, maybe turning the air conditioning on. Um, to cool the house down while they're getting ready for work or bathing or something like that. Um, different times of the day there are sharp increases in demand because of that. Um, local wind energy usage dealing with grid tied systems. If a wind turbine is used to produce power for the grid it must be connected to an existing section of the grid and it's also important that the power that it creates needs to meet strict specifications for that grid section. Um, what that means is the power that they generate can't have noise in it or too much noise. It needs to match the frequency of the grid so it has to uh, be well conditioned and we'll get into the properties of that and the specifics of what all that means later on. Grid tied systems and large wind farms are on the rise due to the rises in energy costs and demand. Also, um, prices in coal, 
um, delivery costs of coal because of fuel prices. The United States government has stated that we should have about 20 percent of the entire electrical grid powered by wind farms um, by the year 2025. Standalone sources are usually used by farmers or other consumers in rural areas and these smaller and cheaper standalone systems power their equipment, pumps, um, anything like that. And it's, They've been doing that for quite some time as mentioned uh, earlier in this module. Uh, the cheaper smaller wind systems are designed to be connected to storage batteries. Um, it's not always done but um, for later use when the wind speeds are not optimal and it really depends on the design of the system and it gets fairly complex. Um, some may be a DC source and require storage and then can be changed to alternating current later on. Um, and we'll get into that later. Some units include a solar power system to aid the wind turbine that's called a hybrid system. That way if the wind is died down and it's still sunny out you're still getting um, power for free basically. Um, let's see. Um, here we get into the specialized training areas. A well-trained workforce should possess or must possess skills in installation, <laughs> troubleshooting, inspection, and the repair of wind power equipment. Also, site preparation, equipment installation, and manufacturing will all require personnel. So if you're not on the job site, you may be with the manufacturer designing these components, uh, putting them together. Um, or you may be for site preparation, heavy construction, uh, crane operator, something like that. And some are educated through on-site training, others in facilities, and some are trained at both. Some of the required knowledge within the wind turbine industry. Uh, electrical and mechanical technicians must be able to assemble, install, troubleshoot, and maintain turbines and various other electrical equipment and devices. Uh, architects, designers, and planners help determine locations, the best locations for individual turbines, um, the number of turbines that may be needed, um, the location, the overall location and the best suited wind farm sites as far as other restrictions. There are also technicians for the manufacturers of metals for the towers, um, assemblers for the lattice towers, um, also for electronics companies and other trades that are popping up everywhere. You see online if you go on eBay or even YouTube, there are so many places that are uh, not necessarily places but just individuals that are putting together basic systems and selling them. Uh, machinists are employed for the manufacture of gear sets, gear boxes, um, hydraulic pumps, valves, cylinders. Large companies need machinists to do that sort of stuff. Personnel are required for site preparation and wind turbine equipment installation and erecting the tower. Um, specific to this program the required knowledge um, is as follows. Wind power history, you have an understanding of it. Um, maintenance procedures, uh, safety procedures, safety um, training, know how to do safety training. Maybe you have a group on the job site and you need to train new workers or co-workers and you need to have an understanding of the um, requirements in safety training. Um, also with that type of training you know climb training like climb assist devices and fall arrest devices and power generation electrical devices as well as control systems and that's mostly for this course right here Um, skills and safety knowledge for wind techs, working with various tools, understanding lockout, tagout procedures, um, getting familiar with fall arrest systems, personal protective equipment, 
the dangers of electrical energy and how to work around it, uh, work near it, safety with hazardous materials, confined spaces, and moving parts. Uh, later on towards the end of this course uh, we will talk about safety training, fall arrest systems, climb assist devices, and a whole a great deal of that as well as um, looking over some videos on the manufacturers recommendations for their climbing equipment and fall arrest equipment. Uh, green jobs and wind. Uh, some projections put the total number of new jobs in green energy at one million job openings. And these are referred to as green collar jobs rather than white collar and blue collar. It's green collar because it's good for the environment so it's a green collar job. Uh, these jobs include director of wind operations and maintenance, wind engineer and environmental engineers which are needed all the time to ensure that um, sites are planned accordingly with the environment and with wildlife. Mechanical and electrical engineers, also planning and sales jobs, teachers and trainers, field service technicians, uh, construction managers and riggers, tower installers, uh, project management, also architectural professionals, assembly techs, and turbine blade technicians, electricians and electrical transmission technicians, and crane and heavy equipment operators, which is a really large part of the of really any install, um, from a medium sized wind turbine to a very large wind turbine that you'd see at a wind farm. There's a need for crane and heavy equipment operators and general construction workers. A little bit about career pathways and how this was all put together through iGen. Um, there is an increasing number of career opportunities in green energy jobs and this is due to the further implementation, implementation of um, cleaner, more renewable energy sources. The iGen Career Pathway team is working on various ways to bring cleaner energy education and career opportunities to you. Um, a little bit of info on the iGen Career Pathways. iGen Career Pathways is the team working on the TAA grant. Um, this is through the College of Lake County. They put all, um, they ran this consortium. Uh, the main objective of this grant is to increase employment in the state of Illinois for TAA workers through developing curriculum and assisting with job opportunities in the growing green economy sector. This applies to green careers such as wind power. Also the TAA Career Pathways Consortium, I should mention, is made up of 17 partner community colleges, uh, namely DACC, with the College of Lake County acting as the grant administrator, and I, I bring up DACC as we put together this wind course. And let's see our key terms which you can find in the the glossary page is uh, let's see brownouts that's when power is reduced due to demand somewhere large demand the voltage rather is decreased. Um, understand a little bit about career pathways um, climb training and its importance, um, working in confined spaces, um, electrical demand, peak demand, um, electrical demand just being the general demand, peak being when it's at maximum and it requires peaking generators or other devices to assist it. Um, fall arrest systems, uh, grid tied systems, um, what what is a load and lockout tagout procedures or loto um, preventative maintenance routine maintenance um, also peaking systems personal protective equipment or PPE project siding standalone sources uh, technicians and wind farm as well um, don't forget this week we have uh, careers and wind paper due um, where I'd like you to follow the instructions and give me some information on um, the, 
wind, tur um, wind jobs, wind careers, and what you're looking at as far as your field of expertise or where you would like to be going. And also there is the quiz and it's I think 10 questions, um, some short answer, multiple choice um, pertaining to this PowerPoint and some of the reading. I'll speak with you guys later.